Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bagman Gaming. This is our first official YouTube review of the Guild Wars 2 Path of Fire. I'm JJ Martyr. I'm Little Jesser. And we're here to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Guild Wars 2 Path of Fire. Let's get to it. I can't. Did she just say I can't? I can't even. I can't e Somebody get her a pumpkin spice latte for Christ's sakes. First and foremost, number one thing about this game and this expansion pack, the Griffin Mount. The Griffin Mount is awesome. It is the best thing this game has done since launch hands down and it's not just the mount itself that's awesome the quest to go on it is awesome it's difficult but it's not too difficult it's not immediately available there's no way to shortcut to it and when you get done you've got something cool it doesn't take you an entire month or a year to do but you can do it and you can enjoy it once you do it the mount the griffin mount spot on guild wars 2 spot on arena net well done well done, yes. And even for the mounts that you get right off the bat to help you into the new zone, you get the Raptor, I'd say about 30 minutes into purchasing the expansion if you're going to play it right away. You do a storyline quest after you go from Lion's Ark to get there. And uh, you get that Raptor pretty quick, and they have you do a heart that requires using the Raptor, kind of like a tutorial, uh, so to speak. And the mechanics are just fantastic. They have races with the new mount, um, all that stuff. And so when you get that, it feels like a whole new game. Mounts really change uh, the travel speed of Guild Wars and make the grindy aspects of the normal world not so grindy. The Raptor, uh, let's see, Jackal, right? The Springer. The and, bunny. Yes, I the bunny. I love the bunny. And then the, uh, oh, what do you call them? Uh, skimmer. Skimmers. The skimmer. skimmers. The skimmers. Uh, all four are fun in their own unique ways. They each have unique combat abilities that can help you initiate combat. We even were doing some pretty cool duos, uh, combos, with the uh, Raptor Bunny combo. Yes, yes, we're uh, going to have to show them a little bit definitely. of that. You're going to need the Springer to get up vertically some spaces that the other mouse just cannot do. Even the Griffin. The Griffin can't even it's get true. as high as the Springer. It's true. You're going to, going to. The Skimmer is a must if you want to get any of the water-based masteries if you want to travel anywhere across quicksand because even with the griffin you'll <laughs> i'll watch dad you you'll fly in there you know and then uh wind up in quicksand just by accident and yeah you know. that's always fun oh man she looks so cool griffin is so cool oh sh shit 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 that's a bone that's a bone sticking out of the that's quicksand ah uh, no fuck Oh, fuck. For our second category, we'd like to talk about the new classes in the game. Yes, new classes are very cool. And I think that the Path of Fire theme is generally mode of play. There's only one or two classes that don't have an entirely different mode of play. In other words, what I mean by that is you do something or have some sort of ability that changes the entire dynamic of the character. That doesn't happen for maybe the Spellbreaker, which is the warrior upgrade, and that's a fantastic job that they did with that. Yes, the Deadeye. You guys did a fantastic job with the Neo mechanic being able to hone in and target one enemy and then deal bonus damage based on that enemy while taking more damage and then hindering your own movement. So it's a good, good debuff and buff ratio. So based right. on how you play, it's really and fun. That, and that Neo mechanic is what I'm talking about exactly. Like with the Deadeye, when you hit your number five button to Neo, you, your abilities change. You no longer can run around. You can only tumble and it changes the entire dynamic of that character. Yeah, absolutely. You get the same thing with the new uh, Guardian mode the, yeah, the, the fire brand the fire brand 
You have three different modes with that. You've uh, played the Firebrand pretty much all the way through. That's what you've been focusing on the most. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So the Firebrand is um, absolutely fantastic in terms of survivability. I love the Guardian because I'm able to play the unstoppable Dragon Hunter in PvP. Oh my gosh, yeah. Right? The ability to deal Condi-based damage that lasts over time while still healing yourself and then buffing yourself so you take less damage anyways is a pretty interesting new mechanic. And, and of course, these are different modes when I say this. You click, when you click your F1 button, you have yeah, five you new abilities that's a whole different way of playing. Uh, when you're F2, that's five different abilities. And then F3 is five different abilities. So. Absolutely. You lose your, your weapons. Uh, it's it's quite literally a new, new mode. You, you don't have your previous weapon abilities that you're used to. There's no more of the virtues that you're used to. They're now tombs. So uh, a lot of cool new mechanics with that. I think the only ones that we're disappointed with are our Han Solo, er, I mean, sorry, new engineer <laughs> class. My name is Guild Wars, but I'm a Star Wars ripoff. You want to play a Jedi with a lightsaber? We have that now because we ripped off the Jedis and the lightsabers with the new engineer class that we'd like to fuck up. It's ridiculous. You want to see what you get when you actually work your ass off on the collection? Oh yeah, I'll show you that too. Let's see here. Achievements. Collections. Specialization connections. Let's see here. The cutting edge, I think is what they call it. Yeah, the cutting edge. Should have called it the Sly Saber. <laughs> no? Uh, that's clever. So this is the ascended one that you get. And what's it look like? Oh! A lightsaber with a handle! You know, you know what's like, funny is is you have these engineers in the game, in the storyline, and they all have these kick-ass golems. And the golems that you get as your engineer in the game are worthless. completely worthless. Yep. Like, you don't even want to use them. Whether, right? and, and the humans don't get them. The, the, <laughs> the char don't get them. No engineer race gets them, but the racial ability of the Azura gets them. And you have to waste your number 10 <laughs> slot, the best, the best ability slot, for something that's absolutely worthless. Yeah, it's terrible. I don't know. So they already screwed up with the uh, suits. Since the beginning, that's been around for a long time. Uh, that's just a bummer. But then to give your rifle, pistol wielding class all of a sudden a, you know, uh, flesh carving lightsaber and uh. shield, uh, just it, it felt kind of like a tearaway. And then even when you see him play, it's it made all me about... want to join the dark side. I almost went back to World of Warcraft. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we, we did almost. I actually. Did almost. <laughs> we don't need to tell him that. <laughs> but the and then the other one is the short bow revenant. Um, you guys had a really cool concept going on with the uh, healing ish capability they had, the dual swords combat, the mist shadow, you know, yeah. DPS, and then. You know what? Let's do. Let's give them a short bow, like our mail wielding class. You know, not like we understand your guys' weapon choices, anyways. We've never done that. The dragon hunter, which is one of my favorites, is a plate wielding dragon slaying longbow user. <laughs> it's a maximum ranged weapon. So, uh, your the weapon choices. You know, we we love you guys, so we work with them. But this uh, short bow revenant crap is. It's pretty sad. And the lightsaber. If you've just started the game, they're not going to affect you. It's only people like me who, you know, it's a shameless plug, I'm an author. So I've been following the storyline of Guild Wars 2 since launch. And following the storyline for me is really important. So this time when the Deadeye came out, I was like, oh, that's great class. How come it didn't come out? during Heart of Thorns yes. with all of the snipers in the storyline. But no, give him a two-handed <laughs> stab. As we talk about storyline, we talk about the different releases, you're gonna hear me praise and complain a lot. The, the praise, let's get this out of the way very, very quickly. Heart of Thorns was too difficult in the PvE sense. It made you feel 
like you were no longer a hero. You went from yeah. slaying Zaitan, the giant dragon uh, that rose an undead city to destroy the world. You kill him. You bring him out of the sky with your homies. You go through all these quests to destroy this giant dragon, only to find pocket raptors in Heart they of Thorns. They wreck you. It's not a Five <laughs> five pocket rap- I was in Heart of Thorns today messing around to get some you wanted to get those bladed boots yeah we oh. wanted to get some bladed boots that he hadn't picked up yet to finish up his bladed set for his dead eye as a matter of fact and I got jumped <laughs> by pocket raptors and five of these little things destroyed yeah, me yeah it's not it's not like oh you can fight them <laughs> it is a one sided I hope I have enough evades and healing spells because you know it's death. There's no, uh, yeah, I think you can get lucky with a necro and AOE him. Maybe. Maybe life yeah. leech. That's yeah. it. That's your only hope. It's it's runs. praying you still have evades and praying that you can do the, do enough damage We to still, to this day, can't beat Tangled Depths. Uh, th- we have to get a group together just to do map completion. Even then, they they uh, run away from us, leave us in the dust. Ugh, it's, it's terrible. It's just a really level confusing map. So in the new expansion aspect, Path of Fire does a fantastic job of making the new zones easily accessible. It's it's fun to get to each of the hero points. It's fun to find the masteries, um, and you do all of this using the new mounts. So you're constantly entertained, and it's really it's not difficult. It's not, it's not, I mean, there's times that it's challenging, but I still had a fighting chance. It wasn't like Heart of Thorns at all, where I was just getting my butt kicked over and over and over again until I logged out, sh- drank a bunch of whiskey, thought about committing suicide, <laughs> logged back in to fight pocket raptors. It's not like that so much in Path of Fire. You can oh. actually do it, you can actually get where you need to go, and there's no tangled depths. So, that's good. Yeah. For uh, sure. But the storyline, you know, uh, and, and Guild Wars 2 is known for the storyline. In the initial launch of the game, you have these great cutscenes where you're talking and, uh, you know, it cuts away to your character, it cuts away to whatever NPC you're talking to, and there's kind of this, makes you feel like you're a part of the game. Cutscenes? I haven't seen those for a year. <laughs> I haven't seen them in like five years. Oh, do you mean they, they stopped towards the ends of Heart of Thorns? <laughs> they didn't even... Do cutscenes in Heart of Thorns, man. It's crazy. Isn't that weird? And here's the thing. Path of Fire comes out, and it's great, but you're still dealing with the same characters. There's no one new to fall in love with. I was literally stuck with the same three characters that I could care less about. Thank goodness Casimir's hot. Because we've we get to look at her a lot. Yeah, and we can't you get sick of him. And we can't even like like Casimir because obviously she plays for the other team yeah which is just fine she doesn't like us back and that's ladies fine. that's fantastic that's but, fine. Uh, i play a lot of girl characters i guess yeah that's but okay. she's, she still won't go for us uh, th- did that make this weird think about it <laughs> <laughs> but uh i think we can all agree that even if you are playing for the same team on uh, right lock side he's not he's not hot anyways he's right a, lock is terrible that's a that's a that's a cat no one's rooting for team right lock and uh, he's kind of a douche and he's, after a while you get sick of right lock when right lock when you walk up after you've ran around to gather <laughs> oh all of God. glint's crystals and right lock's like look who finally showed up which we have Fuck a video for you, you right lock oh, yes can we just say that I hate that. Yeah, and uh, the only time I like Right Lock is at the very end. The very end, he goes, "Woo, speech, <laughs> speech, <laughs> speech." That's it. Speech, speech. I'll stop bashing Right Lock a little bit. He gives you so often. That's fun. That's cool. That's fun. But and you have to do the mastery <laughs> without it. So it's like, thanks Guild Wars for giving us this cool, fun mini game that you want to play, but. <laughs> If you want the rewards and achievements, sheath that thing. Don't use what we gave you. Exactly. Use your own stuff and cry while you see. I will give you props on this though. Uh, we did this storyline together with uh, his his guardian as a firebrand, 
and you altered my character in several different ways throughout that story. That line. was amazing. Very to cool. See, to see me go through my memories as a spirit, as I'm re-looking for my history and my past, and have him just be a lost soul buffing me there was, yeah, that was fun. really cool because you still feel like you're doing your story and you have your uh, homie helping you, but you also don't feel like you're both meshed into the same plot. It was really cool concept. I don't know why you guys didn't do it for the first one. But that's good. That was great improvement. Keep that up. That yes. was fun. Uh, and the mission where you catch the giant uh, beast uh, <laughs> while you're getting Joku's army and you turn into a speedy thing <laughs> uh, which I'll pull a clip of him running like a spaz in circles for you just so you can get a giggle. But that is one of the coolest concepts ever for him to just have a little bit of a speed edge on me so he can drop a speed boost so I can catch the monster faster is really fun. It was challenging for both of us. Yeah. There were times where I'd beat him and there were times where he was way ahead of me because of that speed boost. So yeah. super cool concept with those missions, guys. Keep that up, please. Uh, I got to complain a little bit, though, about, I mean, not just the storyline, like, you know, I don't feel like you guys invested into getting us some new characters that we could get to know and, and enjoy. Or at least making the old ones look pretty in some cutscenes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I feel like you kind of dropped the ball there. But um, one of the things that I'm really kind of upset about is that I've been with you guys for five years. I've been playing the game for five years. And for five years, I've been dumping money on you. And I don't have any semblance of that achievement as we go into the new zones. Now, I realize that you guys are doing the best you can, and I realize that there's certain things that you can't do because you're trying to constantly get new players in and get new players to be experiencing and exposed to your content. So that's fine, but you need to figure out how to mesh the two worlds because my world is five years I'm the commander I've killed Zaitan I've killed Mordremoth I want some damn respect from these NPCs <laughs> yeah. I should be legendary I've killed two dragons that the gods themselves have admitted are stronger than them they've said oh my god the dragons are pro I've killed two of them from the beginning I and want some respect I want some props yeah and the NPC response you get this is the dragon slayer Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thanks. I've heard about you, Commander. No, yeah. not well. Good well, thing you won't use the ley lines here. It, yeah. Uh. Well, and that's the other thing, too. So I get all these masteries from Heart of Thorns. I get these masteries from this. I get these masteries from that. But at the end of the day, by the time we get to the Crystal Desert, there's no ley lines in the Crystal Desert for me to glide off of. Wait, ley lines? There's none. Isn't there a mission? Where she specifically says, we're surrounded by ley lines? Well, when you drop down to that pit, you must be, because that's the only way the words get out. Oh, so let's hear that real quick. <laughs> really strong. How'd you do that? I jumped into a deep pit. Good job. Wherever you are, must be on a ley line nexus. Listen. Thanks, Guild Wars. That's awesome. We should be able to glide around. There should be ley lines. And if the ley lines are there and people don't have Heart of Thorns, they should be like, what the hell are those? They're called ley lines. How do I get that? By Heart of Thorns. Okay. Just a little bit of reward to the players who did go through that. This time, you, you hear the talk about the ley lines. You hear the talk about Mordramoth being slain. But no actual juicy proof. We need something that shows he's got 249 mastery points. Uh, what? Six away from max or... or Eight, well, whatever, yeah. whatever race. So close, race. yeah, so I close to maximum amount of masteries in the game. And I was able to go just the same amount of places the same way until he got his griffin. So it's kind of, it, it's, it's just frustrating for the people who actually spend it. And for me, why do I want to go back and get my ley line mastery? There's no point for that mastery. It's 12 mastery points and takes so much experience. But why do I need it now that I'm done with my Heart of Thorns content? I already went through it, I'll never use ley lines again. So not only do you lose that, but for the people like me who've never played consistently all the way through and came back to play the game again, because now we play it pretty die hard. We you know, we play it consistently now. But now why would I go back? It, right. You just destroyed that that amount of reward. The rewards are, the, the reward for longevity in play is just not there, in my opinion. Um, you you get no prestige, and you get no story vestment. There's no way that I've affected the world. There's 
no statues in my honor or anything like that. Yeah, not no. that I don't know how you would do anything like that, but just as a suggestion, there's not there's none of those those type of things that make me feel like I'm any more invested in the game now as I was five years ago. And thinking of the hundreds and hundreds of dollars I've spent playing the game, I feel like that that's something that should be there for every expansion. Yeah, and, and to further that thought process, it doesn't even have to be another player versus your player. Say you make a new character on your account and you have an 80 boost. When I boost a character to 80, he still has the same dialogue, the same exact chat options, the same exact NPC conversations as my character who killed Zaitan, who killed Mordremoth, who went through stupid fractals, which are, that's fun, and it had all this cool gear and uh, experience just just to have an 80 boosted character have that same feel. So while the gear and equipment might not match up, the actual story, um, you guys just shove them in there like they're already the commander. Now I know obviously that'd be difficult to change because you know you want people who buy your expansion and make a new character to start off like that. But it'd be cool if they still go through that and they still are the hero who finds the lost city and who does these things, but they don't have to be the commander who slayed Zaitan and found the lost city. It, you know, it, food for thought, but it's, I know it'd be a difficult process, but it'd be extremely rewarding for us players who have actually gone through and struggled. Right. And, you know, another way to, of doing that would be to have some sort of um, home instance that was uh, more altered by actual gameplay as opposed to home instances that are just altered by whatever you've purchased. So you do have home instances and... You do have them in certain ways, but they're not they're not a drawing point. You yeah. don't you, there's no there's no cool thing that I log at Lion's Ark. Yeah, you I don't even want to log at home. I That's don't even go into a home log. instance and I certainly don't ask anybody to come into my home instance with me. I do have a couple of online friends that we go in there and we mine in a circle around their home instance, we mine all of that stuff. But that's not at all what I'm talking about, uh, emotional gameplay or, or being vested in the game. Yeah, why not, um, even if it's just a mini statue collection, you know? Maybe you have a shelf in your house or a shelf on, on outside. Something. Or something. Something that says you did it just a, a little. A gigantic head of Mordremoth stuck in the <laughs> middle of your instance. That would be awesome. Okay, that's that's a lot of much, but that would be killer. I would I would. Love I would that. so. I would... I'd make my house inside Mordremoth's head. Yeah, totally. If you were a plant person, you know how baller that could be? Yeah, I, a big old Mordremoth skull house. Um, well, I mean, ultimately, you guys are, are not... I don't think that you're putting forth the effort of showing people that have played the game for a long time any sort of bonus. It's like being a regular at a bar. You go to the bar over and over again, and sooner or later, people stop waiting on you because they're more interested in other people coming in the door. Well... It's true. Like you want other people to come in the door, but you also want to make sure that the people that you're that have been yeah, you supporting check in you on your regulars. You know, you know your regulars' first name for Christ's sake. You better be able to wait on them too. You don't just buy advertising to get more people in the door. You actually do things that are nice for the people that have been doing it. Especially like you know you you pulled this shit in Heart of Thorns that was just ridiculous, where you made it to where somebody could just buy Heart of Thorns, and they were up to date in the game. You made the game free to play. So those of us that have actually purchased the launch game, yeah, we've Talk actually about, spent more money than other people. Talk about $65 out our arse for nothing. Right. Like, that was so sad. And while I'm at this idea of you guys making money, because I want you to make money because I want you to continue making good games, stop fucking me in the Black Lions trading post. Oh. Okay? Your gem store has fucked me too many times. <laughs> I am so fed up with your black lion's chest. Now you've made it to where if I buy my keys, that's all I... Uh, listen, honestly, all I do is I buy keys every month to open my black lion chest every month. That's my budget for my video game habit. Guild Wars 2 is my video game habit. So I buy black lion's keys for my black lion's chest yeah. every month. Okay, that's what I spend my money on. Now, this time you've turned around and made one of my Black Lion slots, which, by the way, there's shit in there anyways. There's nothing yeah, in there. Yeah, there's already... The only reason why I buy it is because I'm OCD and I don't like to fucking chess in my inventory. But there's nothing in there. 
they've they've pretty much dropped out all of the bonuses. You can't get your XP bonuses or your yep. magic find bonuses anymore. I never nope. see that. Nope. Mini baby pocket raptor mouth. Yeah, but raptors again! You ruined my black lion chest for the same shit that killed me in Heart of Thorns! You assholes! I can't believe you did that! You already smeared those of us who paid money in the face with pocket, pocket raptors and heart of thorns. We already spent more money than the people who bought that game. And now you're going to take our black lion's chest and shove a raptor in there. You're putting raptors in my chest as a requirement. It's not like there's a little X where, like, we know we have a random chance of getting the mini raptor. There's tons of stupid other mini Bull crap! You can get out of those things, but it's forced. You've killed, you've killed me. I hate raptors. I loved dinosaurs <laughs> as a child. You ruined my childhood wonder and took raptors and destroyed them. You've crushed raptors so much that sometimes when my guy sits down on his raptor and scratches him and he does the little dog leg thing, I want to punch that fucking raptor. <laughs> it's not even the same size as the mini raptor now. I just don't that you can buy for karma. I don't you understand. I don't karma. understand why there's a spot in the black lion chest. Why? Taken up for raptors. I don't get that. Why are they even in the black lion chest? But do you do realize if you get multiple raptors? You can add more stuff and do more things and put them in the... Do they have a blue raptor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can get blue raptors. They have a blue... And if you get multiple blue raptors, you can get a white raptor. A white one? Oh my god. Hey, do you realize how many black lion's chests you have to open for that? Five for each color. Five! And there's white, blue, green, red, black... Lava raptors, ice raptors, and each one you just take five more and make the new one. You know, I would... just want a little, I just want a PvP booster for my PvP. Or, that's all I want. Or let alone an actual full Black Lion ticket that's not a ticket scrap. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, a full ticket? You know, if, if I had a guaranteed ticket scrap instead of a guaranteed raptor. I know it would take Done. 10 of these. I would buy the shit I out of Black Lion's like, keys. I, I'm like, okay, it still takes 10. It's going to take 10 of these chests before I can get one. That's going to suck. But at least it isn't a slap in the baby blue raptor's face because not only do you insult us with those Black Lion's chests, who says that all those captive raptors yeah. want to be given away for free? PETA's going to hear about this video PETA. Anyways, fuck your raptors. On to the next topic. Hey, jewel crafting! Do you remember that? What? What's jewel crafting? Can you uh, explain who knows? that process to me? I haven't. Who knows? Because no one gives a shit. Yeah, I haven't had to use that one. Can you? What? What is jewel crafting? It's it's a lost art. Oh, but here's well. the thing. I got one thing for you guys. This is a. I'm a solver. Okay, I'm going to solve some problems for you. Make your 400 Jewel Crafter have the ability to take two Ascended Jewel pieces, like two? maybe two of them Wait, that you get, what? and merge them together to change the stats of one item. Whoa, so you had to put a little effort in and lose a little bit of something to gain a little. Ah, and you Whoa, still have balance. a craft that you can use because you can find two piece of shit fractal rings yeah. that you get that you just got to disenchant anyways and put them together with a master jewel crafter yeah. and make it something fantastic. Oh my god. You... Hey guys, dungeons, remember those? What? No. Dungeons. There were those once too. I don't think they're in Path of Fire. Uh, are there any new dungeons? Well, there are. There's some new Path of Fire dungeons that go along with the new Path of Fire race that they released. Oh, yeah, I did. It's a really good one because they didn't release a new race or any new classes. They just gave us more specializations. They didn't release any new dungeons either. Oh, PvP. What? You remember that? There's PvP in this game? Oh. Oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, they gave us a reward track, though. They did give us a reward track. That's cool. Yeah. But, uh, how but that long goes with been... the new races. Oh, yeah. Because uh, cause we've been playing the same eight maps with our other characters for how many years now? I don't know. They... 
God forbid they use our mounts or gliders in PvP. Oh my though. god. And God forbid they do something other than capturing points. Like, oh. Heaven forbid there was a capture the flag. Two map. One map where you can summon soldiers. Oh, yeah. One. 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 Yeah. Where you start out with the little There's power. a map when you have to kill bad guys. One really? One. There's one. Wow. There. One? No, two. There's two. You can kill two back. Does that mean? Does that mean we have eleven PVP maps Guys, total? Guys, it's terrible. Give us some new content. New PVP types, with the new abilities. Here's the funny thing about PVP: you could be doing a ten versus ten PVP map that was capture the flag, mounted, and all you would have to have is borrowed mounts at the very beginning where people spawn. The game is called Guild Wars. How come? Guilds. <laughs> Don't say it. How come guilds can't be a war? Did he, did he just say the game title? You mean with two expansions? I'm pretty sure there's a developer that thinks the game's called Star Wars. A. Not Guild Wars. <laughs> and fuck that developer, whoever that guy is. We've, we've got it. The diehard Guild Wars players, like, I'm shocked whenever I see people review this and they're just like, ah, oh, this is great, this is great, this is great. You guys really need some criticism because it's not all that great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can see why the exterior looks absolutely beautiful. You have a new map that is stunning to look at, it's fun to run around in, and you have a new way to do it. You know, the mounts are absolutely wonderful. In fact, I would go so far as to say when the game released five years ago, it was a 10 out of a 10. Maybe 11 out of 10. God, that's, the game was so that's good. That's an amazing... It's the, the fighting dynamic, the storyline, everything was great. You wanted to do world bosses. Oh, man. We would wait on timers for Takato. For Takato. Why do you do Takato anymore? Yeah, you would even go back to to do the Shadow Behemoth, for crying out loud. Yeah. they You advertise so well, and then you actually play the game, and you say, oh, well, this it's Mount. It's, it's really... Yeah, you really just... It, it was really just a gem store... Purchase. Yep, it, it should it should have been should have been 800 gems in another living world. Um, your living worlds have been equally as storyline appealing as yeah. the new Path of Fire, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, which also purchase Living World Three if you want to understand anything that's going on in Path of Fire. This dragon all of a sudden shows up out of nowhere. The, the <laughs> last thing you remember is holding an egg and Heart of Thorns. So if you don't spend the gems, and they don't forewarn you about this either, there's not a little message that says, hey, most of the training that you gave this dragon, you train a dragon in Living World, or, uh, heart, yeah, Living World Three, right? Yeah. You train the dragon, to give it the ability you used to be the god of war. Right. So you create, you're a hero. You don't feel like a hero in this game at all. You know, Oh, I've heard of you, Commander. Well, what have you heard? Well, you, you, you look cool in your new armor set. <laughs> your guilds can't war with one another and no PvP maps. So if you want to talk about players fighting other players in a game called Guild Wars, game's not for you. Your guilds don't go to war, they don't give you new PvP content, they don't include the new content that you're given in your old PvP modes, they don't even give you new maps, new things to look at. And in Path of Fire, they don't give you new cutscenes, they don't give you new characters. And they don't make you feel like you've been playing the game for five years. They don't give you a new race, they don't give you a new class, they give you new professions for the characters that you've already created, that some of which we can argue are completely stupid and have already been created by Walt Disney. You should have. <laughs> it's true, <laughs> Lucas. It's true. Right, but you should have bit the bullet. You should have made a new race at Heart of Thorns that had a storyline that went all the way through Zaitan, just like your other races. And you should have bit the bullet and made a new race that had a storyline that went all the way through Zaitan with in and into the new expansion. You guys really, really are dropping the ball when it comes. Path of Fire, it's not really a path at all. <clears throat> it's not really a path at all. It's railroad tracks. You can't go anywhere, you can't do anything, and anything you've done doesn't matter. It's the railroad to fire. Yep. Yeah. Path of Fire, railroad to griffins. That's it. Because you don't get a choice in what you're doing, and all you want is the griffin. And no recognition for anything you've done in the past. All right, guys, there you have it. That is our 
first official review of the Path of Fire Guild Wars 2 expansion pack. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed our video, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We uh, have a lot of good things coming your way. A lot of funny stuff, a lot of serious stuff. If you have any comments, please leave them below. We'll do our best to respond to them as quickly as possible. Absolutely, and special shout out to the Guild Wars team for creating a game for us to review in the first place. Very good, thank you very much. We appreciate it, we'll see you next time.